Hi guys, here is the video on 6.5 day 3 de Moivre's theorem. And de Moivre's theorem can do three things. You can find powers of complex numbers, you can find roots of complex numbers, and you can solve equations with complex solutions. So de Moivre's theorem allows us to take complex numbers and raise them to a particular power. So for example, if I wanted to take the complex number 1 plus 2i, and raise it to the 10th power. I can use de Moivre's theorem to do that. Now your complex number has to be in trig form first, so that's why you see that r cosine theta plus i sine of theta. Now I like to write these formulas in the shorthand version, so instead of writing the entire formula out, I like to use the CIS, cosine plus i sine, of n times theta. Same thing for the theorem on nth roots. So the theorem on nth roots is an expansion of de Moivre's theorem, and it'll allow us to calculate all of the roots of a particular number. So de Moivre's theorem allows us to raise that complex number to a power. The theorem on nth roots allows us to take a complex number and um, take particular roots of it. So the square root, cube root, fourth root, um, whatever root you want. So the first example is looking at de Moivre's theorem. So we want to take negative 2 minus 2i and raise it to the 10th power. Now in order to use de Moivre's theorem, you need to know a couple things. You need to know r, you need to know n, and you need to know theta. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find r. So r is going to be the square root of negative 2 squared plus negative 2 squared. So my two components of the complex number. So that gives me the square root of 8, which I can simplify to 2 square root of 2. In order to find theta, I need to actually graph my complex number, because theta depends on the quadrant that you're in. So I have negative 2 minus 2i. That's the same thing as graphing negative 2 comma negative 2. So that puts me in the third quadrant, where my horizontal piece is negative 2 and vertical piece is also negative 2. Um, from here, I want to solve for theta, and I have a right triangle, so I'm going to use inverse tangent since I have my opposite and my adjacent. So I have inverse tangent of essentially 1, and that gives me 45 degrees. Now we always want this angle in standard position, so from your positive x-axis until you hit the complex number, so that's what I highlighted in green. Um, so the actual angle in standard position is 225 degrees. Now that I have um, my r, n, and theta, I can go ahead and work through de Moivre's theorem. So I have r to the nth power, so that gives me 2 root 2 to the 10th power. Now if you wanted to just do the square root of 8 to the 10th power, that's perfectly fine as well. Um, cosine i sine of n times theta, so 10 times 225 degrees. Now from here, I'm going to simplify my individual pieces. So 2 root 2 to the 10th power is 32,768 cosine i sine of 2,250 degrees. And then from here, I just need to work through that cosine plus i sine. So I have my 32,768, and I'm going to evaluate cosine of 2,250 degrees. That gives me 0. And then plus i sine of 2,250 degrees. So uh, sine of 2,250 degrees is 1. So I have 0 plus 1i. And of course, at this point, since you have this number in front of the parentheses, you want to distribute it. So that just leaves you with 32,768i as your answer. Now, when I say evaluate the trig parts, so cosine of 2,250 and sine of 2,250, you're just plugging those into your calculator. Just make sure your calculator is in degree mode. So that right there is de Moivre's theorem. Start by finding r, from there find theta, and then from there use n, which is your exponent, to work through that formula. All right, roots of complex numbers. So roots of complex numbers are a little more um, complicated than working through de Moivre's theorem. You still need to know r, n, and theta, but you're also going to use this value k that'll help you find all of the roots. 
So uh, the theorem on complex numbers states that if I have the fourth root, I should have four of them. If I have the fifth root, I should have five of them, and so forth. So I want to find the four fourth roots of negative 16. So again, I want to find r. So r is going to be negative 16 squared plus 0 squared, because negative 16 is the same thing as negative 16 plus 0i. And then that just leaves me with a positive 16, so r is 16. And then I'm going to graph it, and what happens when I graph it is you end up on your, pos or your negative x-axis. That puts your angle at 180 degrees. So you don't even have to use inverse tangent at all, um, because your angle ends up being on your x-axis. So I have r, and I now have theta. n is going to be 4, since I want to find the fourth root of negative 16. So now I'm going to start working through the formula. So it's the fourth root of 16 times cosine i sine of theta, which is 180, plus 360 times k all over n, which in this case is 4. And then from here, I like to simplify what's in my parentheses. So the fourth root of 16 is 2. Cosine i sine of 180 divided by 4 is 45. 360 divided by 4 is 90 degrees times k. Now what is exactly k? So k allows us to find all of the roots. So with the formula for the nth root of um, complex numbers, let's see, let me go back. Uh, let's see. Right here, if you notice, it says where k equals 0, 1, all the way up to n minus 1. Um, so with this, you need to list out all of your k's, and that will help us find all of the roots. Oh, wait a second. There we go. Oh, well, there's all the work. Uh, let me backtrack a little bit. Oh, shoot. Technical difficulties. Okay. Well, anyway, so let me just kind of outline what I did. So I have um, the 45 degrees plus 90K, and then over here I started by listing out my values of K. So I have K equals 0, K equals 1, K equals 2, K equals 3. Now I stop at 3 because I want four roots, and I have 1, 2, 3, 4 of them. Okay, so you always start with zero, and then you stop once you have the actual quantity that you are looking for. From here, I'm just plugging in zero for k into this expression. So I have zero times 90 is zero, plus 45 gives me this 45 degrees. Um, plugging in one, that gives me 135. Plugging in two, gives me 225. And plugging in three, gives me 315. And then to actually get your answer, I want you to simplify that cosine i sine form. So I'm leaving all the twos in the front um, because I don't want to distribute them yet. And then from here, I'm going to my calculator and I'm plugging stuff in. So I'm going to take cosine of 45 degrees. Cosine of 45 degrees is going to give you 0 0.707, which hopefully you recognize as root 2 over 2. And then sine of 45 degrees, also 0 0.707, which you should recognize as root 2 over 2. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the 135, followed by the 225, followed by the 315. So just using my calculator to find all of these values. And then from here, since you do have a number in front of the parenthesis, you always want to distribute it. So I'm distributing 2 into the parenthesis, but if you'll notice, all of those fractions are divided by 2. So since I'm multiplying by 2 and dividing by 2 at the same time, they cancel. And that leaves us with these four answers as the four fourth roots of negative 16. So with the, nth, with the theorem on nth roots, the formula looks complicated, but the actual pieces um, is not so bad. You just have to do several pieces since you're going to have more than one answer. All right, find the three cube roots of unity. Well, first of all, what is unity? Unity is a fancy way to say one. Why didn't they just write one? I don't know. But again, we need to find r, theta, and n. So one is the same thing as one plus zero i. So I have the square root of one squared plus zero squared, which of course is just one. 
And then for theta, if I graph it, I'm on my positive x-axis, so that means theta is zero degrees. And then I can start to work through the formula. So since I want the cube root, my n is going to be three. So I have the cube root of one, cosine i sine of zero plus 360k all over n, and once again, n is three, because I want the three cube roots of one. And then just like last time, we're gonna simplify it. The cube root of one is just one. Cosine I sine of zero divided by three is just zero. And 360 divided by three is 120 degrees. So I have one cosine I sine of zero plus 120K. And then from here, we need to list out our values of K. So we always start with K equals zero. Then the next one is going to be k equals 1, followed by k equals 2. And I'm going to stop right there because I have three values for k, and I want three cube roots of 1. And then from there, I'm just plugging in 0 for k. So the first one leaves me with 1 cosine i sine of 0. Second one, when I plug in 1 for k, that leaves me 1 cosine i sine of 120 degrees. And the third one, when I plug in 2 for k, that leaves me with 1 cosine i sine of 240 degrees. And then from here, I need to evaluate. So this is when you grab your calculator. So cosine of 0 is 1. And sine of 0 is 0. So I have 1 times 1 plus 0i gives me 1 yeah, just one. And then cosine of 120 degrees is negative one half plus sine of 120 is root three over two. In your calculator, you should have seen 0.866, which hopefully you recognize as root three over two. And then of course, distributing that one, you get that same answer back. So negative one half plus root three over two i. And then finally, cosine of 240 degrees is negative one half plus, just kidding, minus root three over two. So again, you should end up with negative 0.866. And then distributing that one, I have negative one half minus root three over two i. So one, negative one half plus root three over two i, negative one half minus root three over two i, are my three cube roots of unity. All right, let's look at another one. So for this one, I wanna find the five fifth roots of one plus i. So again, I wanna find r. So r in this case is gonna be one squared plus one squared, which gives me the square root of two. Now I'm gonna graph it, one plus one i is in the first quadrant, so my horizontal piece is one, vertical piece is also one. From here, since I'm trying to solve for theta, I'm gonna take the inverse tangent of one over one, which ends up being 45 degrees. And I want five fifth roots of n, so I want, uh, or five fifth roots of one plus i, so that means n is size. So I have the fifth root of why does that say one? It should be root. Oh, wait a second. I just realized that I am totally doing this problem wrong. <laughs> so it should be the fifth root of not one because R was uh, the square root of two. So yeah, this problem is wrong. Uh, let's just fast forward through this. Ignore it because it's not right. There we go. Um, so right here, what this example was supposed to be teaching you, except I did it wrong because it's not supposed to be one in front of the CIS. Um, it just shows that sometimes your angles in your cosine I sine are not angles that you see around the unit circle. Um, and if that's the case, you just leave it as your answer. So for example, when I end up with nine degrees, I don't know what cosine of nine degrees is or sine of 90 degrees or nine degrees, so I just leave it as it is. Um, but again, ignore this example because I did it wrong.
All right, last one, solving equations. So I want to find the value of x such that um, x cubed plus 8 equals 0. So, oh, this is going way too fast. I forgot to slow this down. There we go. So I can rewrite this as x cubed equals negative 8, and essentially what I'm trying to find is I'm trying to find the three cube roots of negative 8. So I can write this as r equals, because again, I need to find r, n, and theta. So this example is just taking uh, an equation and applying the theorem on nth roots. So negative 8 is the same thing as negative 8 plus 0i. So I have r equals the square root of negative 8 squared plus 0 squared, which is just going to give you the square root of uh, 64, which is 8. And then when I graph it, I am at the negative x-axis, so that puts me at theta being 180 degrees again. And since I want the three cube roots, um, n is going to be 3, so I'm going to take the cube root of 8, um, cosine i sine of 180, plus 360k all over n, and n in this case is 3. So the cube root of 8 is 2 cosine i sine of 180 divided by 3 is 60 degrees plus 360 divided by 3 is 120 degrees and then I need three values for k so I'm going to start with k equals 0 k equals 1 and k equals 2 to get my three values of k since I want three cube roots. So just working through it, I have two cosine i sine of just 60 degrees because when I plug in zero for k, that gives me 60. Um, two cosine i sine of 180 degrees because when I plug in one, that gives me 180. And then two cosine i sine of, I'm plugging in two for k, and that gives me 300 degrees. And then my job from here is to simplify each expression. So I'm leaving the 2 in the front. Cosine of 60 degrees is 1 half. Sine of 60 degrees is root 3 over 2 i. Cosine of 180 is negative 1. Sine of 180 is 0, so I have negative 1 plus 0 i. And then cosine of 300 is 1 half minus root 3 over 2, because sine of 300 is negative root 3 over 2. And then, of course, I just need to distribute the 2. So since you're dividing all those fractions by 2 and multiplying by 2, your 2s just cancel. Um, for that second one, 2 times negative 1 gives you negative 2. And then for the third one, I have 1 minus 3i. So that is applying the theorem on nth roots to solving equations. All right, so this concludes the video for 6.3. Three, no, this is not 6.3, 6.5, um, day three, which was Dimov's theorem.